Hey guys, Lufthang River here as always and actually this is gonna be a welcome back. Welcome back to Steel Armor Blaze of War. And most of you guys probably won't remember this game. I've made one or two video about a year and a half ago. One of them is surprisingly enough is one of my most viewed video with 300,000 views. It tells the power of search engine optimization. But this is basically uh, the successor of Steel Fury. Steel Fury is a World War II tank sim developed by the small Ukrainian company named Graviteam. And this is based on pre-modern wars, I guess. So we don't see anything too advanced like the Abrams or the T-90s. Instead, we're riding on T-62 today as part of an Iraqi tank battalion facing against T-60s, or actually M-60s, sorry, M-60s and chieftains. Whoa! You already ta see tanks over there. We're just gonna ignore them for now. So I can, you know, talk a little bit more before going into engagement. But as I was saying, this is a successor to Steel Fury. And, you know, it has both good and bad parts. I'm gonna change the formation to line or column attribute. Formation density, normal. And, yep. Looks good. No! Don't engage them yet. It's no fun. <laughs> So like I said, my first video on this game really got a lot of attention. Um, mostly from people interested in tank sims. God damn it. This guy needs to go away. I gotta cross. There's a river in front of us which we need to cross but if this guy's mumbling around and that's the the number one issue that I have with the game is that the AIs are just not good like what what the hell are you doing sir I mean it looks freaking awesome but I guess I have to manually do this you can also turn out as a driver but when the fire control system is online can't really do it to protect the gunner's head from the the turret and the cannon. So we're crossing the river now. You can see second is pushing up as well. T62 has an ability to cross over certain depth of water. Of course, can't completely submerge, but I'll show you guys the outside as well. It looks pretty badass. Which is one thing to tell about this game because like I never thought Russian tanks are sexy I, I never liked actually I never liked any modern tank design or postmodern tank design I like World War II tanks but I think after that all the designs for the tanks are kind of boring but this game made me think that T-62 a quite standard looking tank is sexy as hell I'll show you guys the interior in a second. So obviously this is the driver's seat. There's nothing much you can do. It's a radio. You can also check the ammo counter to the right. Is that the speed? Bearing? What not, what not. Some of the instrument works. Not all. I don't think these does anything. The radio. Or is this the battery? I'm not sure. I think this is something to do with the battery, not the radio, sorry. And then, we have the gunner. T-62 has a pretty strong 115mm smoothbore cannon. And look at the attention! Like, as we turn the turret, you can see... Oh, stop moving. 
you can see the inside of the tank, the lower plate. That's the ammunition. You could see the driver just now. My loader just popped his head out. That's the driver. Like, that's amazing. And of course, you can see the see through the sight. And one of the main advantage we have over uh, the M60s that we're going to be facing on M60s and Chieftains, I think. Uh, Centurions, I forgot. I think Chieftains. Is that the optic has an adjustable zoom like this. So that helps. But unfortunately, the disadvantage we have is that it doesn't have a rangefinder. You have this, you know, tiny thing over here on the lower right corner, which I think you guys are used to seeing if you are, uh, if you've seen SVD or PSO optic in game. This is 2.7 meter height, so an average tank height, and you can get a guesstimate of range, I guess. But not accurate, not as accurate as M60's optic range finder, which you'll see in another video. And then we have the loader. He's currently turned out. I can also use this gun. This is the T62A, so it also has 12.7 millimeter heavy machine gun equipped, like that. And other than that, his job is to basically load ammunition. The cannon on the T-62 has an auto-ejection. I'll show you guys a bit. Um, here we go. So right now I have the fin-stabilized armor-piercing round loaded, or the Sabot round. And as we fire, you see that the shell is going to be automatically ejected outside of a tank. Which is awesome. But other than that, the loading process is dumb by hand. Like this. And because of this um, automated shell ejection system, the cannon needs to correct its elevation every time you reload. So that's kind of a pain, I guess. And then lastly, we have the commander. I can use the Binox. Where's the other... Where where did the other guy go? <laughs> oh, there he is. Yep. Alright, finally we are regrouped. And we should be seeing enemy armor relatively soon. I really don't have good understanding about the tactics that you should take in this game uh, but one major advantage the T-62 has is the gun stabilizer so right now stabilization is on as you can see turning off like that it's more easier to tell from the optic so right now it's off it's almost impossible to make an accurate hit over distance while on the move but once you turn on the stabilizer by pressing M by default voila and this just isn't an easy arcade mode it actually existed on T62 at that time I think pretty much every armored units at this age has it but Back then, I think it was a pretty rare thing. The M60 doesn't have it. It's a pain in the ass to halt every time before you shoot. <laughs> Armored contact. That's a wrecked vehicle. Uh, there he is. Not sure if I can see him. Um, yes I can. Ranging. I've designated the target for the commander and if he has the view on that tank he's just gonna give me an estimate of the range. We're gonna put that into our optic. 
Right now I'm saying there's about 16,000 meters. Say boat round, load it. Uh, firing one. Hit. Second going in, fire. Another hit. Commander's uh, giving me more targets. Yeah, there he is. So those two, I think they were um, chieftains, are taken out. There's another one bearing 217. Keep loading, save boat, fence stabilize, armor piercing. Loading. He must be over this crest. Oh, another target ranging. And try and keep wiggling. Range 2000. Correcting range. And fire. There's another one to our left. We need to worry about that more. Yeah, there he is. No, oh, actually, he's down. I'm just gonna check around the area, make sure I'm not being flanked or missing any closer target. Well, let's focus on this guy again. Seems like friendlies are shooting heat rounds. Firing again. It's really hard to observe shots. Again, I'm just gonna check around our area, make sure no one is flanking. Yeah, looks good. The two targets, one there, one there. Is that? Yeah, it's an enemy as well. Commander is not giving me any range right now. We just got hit quite hard. 16,000? Try. Hit! We're hit as well, damage report. Tracks are chassis damaged. Our gun's still up. Our ranging is correct. Fire. Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, this tank is fucked up. Let's see how others are doing. Second is still up. Yeah. 
быстрее. Под калиберным. Готово. We got immediately wrecked. I think there was actually two or three more tanks closer to the target. That's the T-62 of ours. Trying to spot him. Yeah, there he is. He's pretty close. Gonna try 800 meters and fire. Hit. Oh, God. We got wrecked. Do we still have tanks available? Nope. All of us is down. Wow. You see the T-55s engaging now because we're a bit late. But regardless, still an awesome fucking game. I'm gonna make sure to upload at least two or three more videos on T-62 and then maybe move up to M-60s which is another type of tank uh, more unique, a lot of more optics and automated fire control system, all the high-tech stuff but for now we're gonna end the video over here, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one